Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to discuss the very topical subject of encryption. What it is, and more importantly, what it isn't. There's a lot of misunderstanding about where and how to use encryption in both NAS and cloud and remote access storage. And if you're doing it wrong, or at the very least not applying the right kind of encryption to you and your data, at best, you may have wasted your time, and at worst, leave yourself open to your data being compromised. Now, the reason for this video, I've been sitting on this script for a while between other projects, but recently you may have heard that um, Apple and iCloud are in discussions right now with the UK about allowing backdoor access to iCloud backups there. Now, this is something that's been flown around in and out of the news, I feel, for almost a decade now, where different global governments have petitioned cloud providers, again, in this case, Apple and their iCloud services, to allow authorities access to people's cloud data there. Now, allowing access to that cloud data is obviously a huge civil liberty for some, but in most cases, with the exception of iCloud, unfortunately, but in a lot of cases, backups to these cloud providers are done encrypted. The data itself lives encrypted on cloud spaces, so not even the providers themselves can access it, they say. But in the case of iCloud, you will need to enable that manually. And hopefully on screen, you've got the steps there to enable moving forward or backup being dated up to your, our, your data being backed up to your iCloud account to be encrypted. And therefore, even if backdoor access was granted, that data would be encrypted and without the encryption key, it can't be opened up. If you've followed the channel for a while, you know I don't really go in for sponsorship that much. But in this video about encryption, if you're running a NAS at home or in your business, securing your data is almost certainly your top priority. That's why you came here. And that's why today's sponsor, NordVPN, let's face it, you've heard of them, comes into the fold quite neatly. NordVPN can be managed via a web GUI or numerous client tools, and you can protect your NAS from external threats using a secure VPN connection. When you're accessing your files remotely, syncing between multiple different locations inside and offsite, you just want to keep prying eyes off your data, and that's where NordVPN covers the bases. Standout NAS-focused features like the NordVPN kill switch and DNS leak protection ensure that your NAS never accidentally exposes data if that VPN connection drops. Plus, a dedicated IP you can run securely through your NAS without relying on dynamic DNS. Remember, having your IP protected is paramount. And for those using your NAS for torrenting purposes, NordVPN's peer-to-peer -peer servers keep your downloads private and your ISP throttle free. And with split tunneling, you can route only specific NAS apps through the VPN while keeping everything else local and accessible. And some locations actually restrict you accessing your NAS via traditional pathways and using first-party relay servers. And that's where accessing geo-restricted pathways to your NAS can be opened up. NordVPN lets you bypass regional locks, so your favorite NAS accessed media, be it multimedia or business-level backups, can all be accessible wherever you are. So regardless of whether you're using a Synology, a QNAP, Unrest, TerraMaster, whatever, you can use NordVPN to open up seamless gateways with existing VPN server client tools wherever you need them. If you do want to take advantage of this, use the discount code NASCompares linked in the description, or just go ahead and use the link in the description to take you straight there and use the discount code. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video, and let's crack on with our talk about encryption. But that really kicked me into making this video because for all the years I've talked about network attached storage and I've included talk of VPN tunnels and encryption over the years, it has to be said that all of these terms, no one of them completely secures unauthorized access to your data or even accessing and seeing the data as it passes through the network, the internet, the air, call it what you will. And that's what today's video is going to be about. So number one, I want to talk about the thing that VPN isn't, and that is that VPN doesn't automatically stop users from seeing your data, okay? In the context of NAS, what do I mean by that? Well, you could set up a storage area on your NAS that's encrypted. It's encrypted folder, an encrypted volume, if you will. You can use that on multiple different NAS brands. However, if a vulnerability leads to an unauthorized access to your system, we've talked about it with ransomware, we've talked about it many times, in most cases, unless you have set up the encrypted storage the right way, 
they will have access to your data. And therefore, if it is an attack vector that is exploiting ransomware, a line of code, if that line of code has got administrative access, which generally needs to be the case, then your encrypted data is not safe. Now, when is encryption in folders and drives actually going to protect you? Well, number one, if you have it set up that the drive storage, in this case, an encrypted drive or an encrypted folder even, if that area of storage has a password or an encryption key, like a USB key or a long downloaded key there, you have to set it up that that storage either needs to be mounted every single time it is accessed and then unmounted, or you at least have it set up that if the system goes via a reboot, via a firmware update and more, that every time the system reboots, that key is required to now now remount the storage area. Now, that is going to be troublesome and certainly not convenient for most. Obviously, you're gonna want your system admins to have a high level of security, device level, case by case basis access, two-factor authentication, MFA, 2FA, OTP, all of these terms, all pretty much the same thing. But more than anything, encryption in that arena, more often than not, applies to if that storage area, uh, the whole system is stolen, if the drives are stolen, then that data cannot be accessed because the encryption is garbling up the data that you're seeing there. It's not going to prevent an unauthorized access user who does gain access to the system from seeing the encrypted data. If the encrypted data in the folder, in the volume or whatever is mounted. So encryption in that context is about ensuring that you only have the data mounted when it needs to be. And when access is happening, that that's where your layers of security come in. But let's move on to where encryption lives in the next step of the chain. Which brings us on to the next layer of encryption that most users are probably the most familiar with, and that is utilizing a VPN, a virtual private network. Now, again, VPNs are held as these bastions of true security. However, they only secure one large point of entry into your cloud or NAS area. Now, these will hide your IP from your internet service provider, hide your location from your internet service provider. Again, they will hide often the address of the server you're trying to access there. So you may have mynas.com or something like that. A VPN will ensure that the internet service provider, again, it could be a coffee shop, could be a library, could be a school, could be your own home internet service provider, will not know the site you are visiting. They just know that you have seemingly left the trackable network because you've gone via a VPN doorway. However, a VPN will not hide things like your device's name. It will also, if you're going to certain websites that have keystrokes or cookie tracking, it's still gonna garner a lot of information from you. So when you're utilizing a VPN in that context, make sure to use one that supports something like obfuscation, which then garbles up a lot of the exchanged information and not only hides the fact to your ISP that you're using a VPN, but also can camouflage a lot of the information when you are browsing around generally, not just the server you are accessing remotely as well. Again, uh, Nord does a very good obfuscated VPN there along with a bunch of their other services. And yes, I'm always gonna say when it comes to VPNs, particularly in the case of this video, of course, that Nord VPN is a great VPN for these services, but nonetheless, VPNs are still only a, a third of the puzzle. And now we move on to probably the most important one for your NAS. NAS certificates. A lot of the things when it comes to users that get their own network attached storage device can be new concepts, but I think a lot of users are completely baffled by the concept of NAS certificates. How often have you gone to a website online and when you've gone to it, your browser, Chrome or whatever, has shouted at you and gone, oh, this website's not safe. I wouldn't if I were you. One of the main reasons for that, amongst it maybe appearing on blacklists in some cases, some websites, it's to do with the website you, you're going to not having an encrypted certificate for the information being uh, handed back and forth. You have the same thing when you set up a NAS on a local area network. By default, a NAS will have something called a self-signed certificate. That certificate 
again on local area networks it's kind of fine but that's why web browsers even when accessing it locally will pop up with that warning in the corner and the little padlock open now when it comes to accessing remotely you're going to need a decent certificate an ssl there now that ssl certificate that you get you can get one for free in most cases and indeed when you access remotely via your nas providers remote access protocol so synology's quick connect systems qnaps my qnap cloud stuff like that they utilize SSL certificates to transfer that information back and forth but nonetheless if you're going to be accessing the NAS remotely using third-party applications as well it's highly advised to get something like a let's encrypt certificate which does need renewal um, often but what it will mean is when you are accessing the NAS remotely the credentials you choose to use will be hidden and that's where the layering comes in because then you would utilize a VPN to disguise your identity and where you are going to access your data and then you've got to ensure you've got the certificate which then hides all the information you are then exchanging all of the keystrokes if you don't have a good certificate in place then you are effectively exchanging your username and credentials in open standard readme.txt text which is the last thing you want to do there are of course more advanced certificates you can go for and if your nas is public facing again mynas.com i've not checked if that url exists maybe i should if you've got a internet facing nas that's when you need a more enterprise or at least business class certificate there to protect you to anonymize the system because in that case, you are opening yourself up to brute force hacking. So to quickly summarize, you need to utilize encryption within your NAS to ensure that if the data is physically handled or at least locally accessed, that you can create provisions that the data can't be plucked out easily. You need to utilize a VPN to anonymize and disguise your remote access to the system from the internet service provider and to use obfuscating VPNs like NordVPN there to disguise a lot at the back and forth and also to stop the ISP from seeing what you are doing. And finally, you have to use NAS encryption in the form of certificates to anonymize and hide the exchange of login credentials and more between you and the system. You can slow things down again with things like two-factor authentication and use dedicated strict devices and dedicated strict IPs to further minimize the attack vectors there. But that's where encryption is with regards to you accessing your system and what it does and what it doesn't. Using all three of these in the right way will heavily reduce any issues you might face. But as always, have a backup in place. And remember, if you are an existing iCloud user, turn on encryption right now and remember that the data that currently exists in your cloud space if it isn't encrypted you can't retroactively encrypt it if you try to do your most existing most current backup there using something called differential backups where the changes are backed up the older data will still remain unencrypted you're going to need to replace all of that data with encrypted data if you want to minimize the risks of a legally obliged backdoor being afforded to your iCloud data and it being accessible there but that's really it thank you so much for watching and thanks once again to nordvpn for sponsoring today's video there's of course a link in the description if you get a hold of it yourself and i do recommend checking out obfuscated vpns to disguise as much as possible the exchanges between you and your network attached storage remotely online. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.